What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Minis Forum UH125 Pro. Now, this is an AI-focused mini PC, and it's also Copilot branded. It's actually got a built-in Copilot button, which is something we haven't seen in these mini PCs yet. But my favorite feature here is the fact that we've got an Oculink port, and it just so happens that I have a prototype of Minis Forum's upcoming eGPU, known as the R3 GAF and we will be testing it. It's not a review on the eGPU that will be coming later on down the road. But given the fact that this mini PC does support Oculink, I figured we could at least test a few games out here and there. You know, if you're interested in checking out a review on that upcoming eGPU, definitely keep an eye on the channel. But let's get right down to it with the new UH125 Pro. So straight off the bat, first thing you might notice here is we've got a dedicated Copilot button. Obviously, this is a Windows mini PC, and Microsoft has really been pushing Copilot AI Assistant. Up front here, good I.O. selection, and around back we've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and of course, that Oculink port around here. Taking a look at what comes inside of the box, obviously we've got the mini PC itself. Couple extra rubber feet in case you need to get down in here and that stickiness wears off. You can always replace them. A mounting bracket along with hardware, HDMI cable, and their small form factor 120 watt power supply. Taking a look at the overall I.O. up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, USB 4, and two full-size USB 3.2 ports. Over here on the right hand side, all of our ventilation, and it's got their new cooling system for these mini PCs, which works out really well, even at those higher wattages. Plus, they've added a full-size SD card reader. Around back, we've obviously got that Oculink port, another USB 4 port, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, one USB 2.0 port, and another full-size USB 3.2 port. In total, we can connect four displays to this mini PC utilizing the HDMI, display port, and both of those USB 4 ports. When it comes to the overall specs for the CPU, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 5 125H. 14 cores, 18 threads, and with this, we get a selection of four performance cores up to 4.5 gigahertz, eight efficiency cores up to 3.6, and two low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. And since we're using a Core Ultra processor, we've got the Intel AI Boost NPU up to 1.4 gigahertz, Intel Arc iGPU with seven execution units up to 2.2 gigahertz. This mini PC will accept up to 96 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, so it's gonna be running in dual channel. You have to get that high density RAM for it. It also has two PCIe NVMe slots, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, and we're running Windows 11 on this machine. This PC came to me with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Again, it's using Minisform's brand new cooling system that they've used in a couple of their other mini PCs that were recently released. This actually works out really well, even up to around 65 watts in this mini. Taking the fan out, we can get right to those NVMe slots, and there's a pretty beefy cooler here for those SSDs. Now, it's not as easy as some of the other mini PCs to get down in here and upgrade the RAM and storage, but it can definitely be done. Before we move into testing, I did want to give you a look at this co-pilot button up front. There was no programming I had to do or anything like that. It was already set up, ready to go in Windows. In my personal use case scenario for using something like co-pilot on my Windows PC is creating images of hamsters in armor with magical swords. That's basically all I do with co-pilot. So we're going to see what we can come up with here. And of course, there's a lot that you can do with Copilot. It's something that I really haven't experimented much with, but it definitely looks like it came up with a few little images. I kind of want to make the hamster look a bit meaner, so I'm just going to go ahead and input that prompt. And yeah, he's not that mean, but that's a good looking hamster in armor with a magical sword. So yeah, I give this an A+, plus, at least for this image it generated for me. Jumping right into the BIOS, I just wanted to see what kind of settings we have. It is using Minisform's new visual BIOS and heading to advanced, CPU configuration. Taking a look through here, we've got hyper threading, boot performance mode, uh, speed shift, moving down, active performance cores, so we can actually disable the efficiency or performance cores, and even the low power efficiency cores. But from power and performance, we've got a couple power profiles to use. Silent mode, power limit is going to be 45 up to 54. Balance mode, 54 up to 60. And performance mode is a sustained 65 watts. 
Now we've got a manual mode here and I'm not exactly sure how high we can go, but I'm just gonna keep it right here in performance mode. If I feel the need, we can come back here and up the TDP just to see if we can get a little more out of it, but we're gonna leave it here just to kind of test the new cooling solution that Minisform has added to this mini PC. As for overall Windows 11 performance, it's been pretty great so far. I've been up and running for a while. Haven't hit thermal throttle and we are in performance mode. Ultra 5, 125H, we've got those 14 cores, 18 threads, 32 gigs of DDR5, and the Arc iGPU. I've got all of the drivers updated. Again, we've got that co-pilot button, so you definitely can go through and create some really awesome hamsters and armor with magical swords. And as for everyday desktop use case scenarios, web browsing, email checking, video playback, this thing's got more than enough power. I mean, we're actually working with a pretty decent CPU here. We'll have to see how the iGPU fares, but you know, when it comes to web browsing, everything's gonna load up really quickly. I'm on Wi-Fi right now, but remember, we do have dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet on this mini PC, so if you wanted to go with a wired connection, shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Next thing I wanna test out is some 4K video playback, so we'll head over to YouTube. 4K, 60, just make sure we're at 4K, full screen, stats for nerds, give it a second to buffer. Drop frames are up in the top left hand corner and through this whole video, I don't think we're gonna drop a single one. This is a more powerful chip than the older Intel chips that we usually use for 4K video playback like the Celerons. So this is not gonna present an issue whatsoever. If you wanted to stream from YouTube like we are here, use your favorite website or streaming service or even playback natively from internal or an external drive. The next thing I did here was run some benchmarks, and first up we've got Geekbench 6 coming in with a single core of 2,360, multi 11,639, and remember we are in performance mode, so we've got that 65 watt TDP. Now it's time to move over to some iGPU benchmarks, Night Raid 25,824, and I also ran Time Spy, and we're seeing a pretty good score of 3,243, but you know we've tested a few of these ARC machines. With these synthetic benchmarks, these scores definitely look good, but we got to get into some real world gaming to see how it really performs. We're starting off with an easier one to run, Forza Horizon 5. I dropped this down to 900p low with no XESS, so we're not using any kind of scaling here. We're getting an average of around 86 FPS with this game, so it's not bad, but again, we're at low settings 900p. If I take this up to 1080, even at low, we're seeing averages around 72. Here's the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're at low 900p, and we've got an average of 67 FPS. So again, not super impressive. And the final one I ran here was Cyberpunk 2077. Dropped it down to 720p, low settings with XESS set to performance. We saw an average of 63. Not a super high-end gaming experience on the iGPU, but we do have Thunderbolt 4 here, and more importantly, we've got that Oculink port around back, so adding a powerful GPU is really easy. And like I mentioned, I do have a prototype of Menace Forum's upcoming Oculink and USB 4 eGPU. This is actually an all-in-one eGPU. They've got another one on the market right now. You can actually pre-order on their website that'll allow you to install basically any GPU into it but you'll need a big hefty power supply behind it. With this, everything's self-contained. It does 65 watt PD fast charging out of USB 4, but we need a little more for this PC here, given that you know the TDP on the CPU is already at 65, so I do have it plugged into the wall, but it does sit really nicely under the monitor. All of the IO on this eGPU is behind it, which is something I really like about this. And once we have everything up and running, you can see we've still got that Core Ultra 125H. We can still access those Intel Arc graphics, but now we've got a Radeon RX 7600 MXT connected here with eight gigs of VRAM. Again, my full review on this eGPU will be coming up soon, but let's see what this thing can do now. Taking a look at some benchmarks with the eGPU connected. With a 3D Mark Night Raid, we're now at 48,716. And if you remember before, just on the iGPU, we we're right there at around 25,000. Time Spy coming in with a 10,031. And this is where the big jumps really happen with these higher end synthetic benchmarks. Because before, on the Arc iGPU, we scored a 3,243. So it's a massive GPU performance jump for sure. 
And I also wanted to take a look at the same games we tested on that iGPU. Here's Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080p ultra settings. And yeah, I mean, we're well over 100 FPS with this. Before, we did have to drop this down to uh, 900p low to get really anywhere with it. Going back to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can now go up to 1080, very high with this. No fidelity cast, average of 135 hey, FPS by the end of this benchmark. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080 Ultra, and I believe FSR is set to quality. Check it out here in just a sec. Yes, yeah, so we're at Ultra 1080, FSR is at quality. We're now getting an average of 86. We didn't have to drop this down to low 720p. In performance mode, this thing idles around 14 watts. Average gaming, we're up to around 64, and the maximum that I could get this to draw was 83 watts. Again, I was in performance mode with all of these tests, so if you did go down to silent or balanced, you can lower that overall power consumption from the wall. Overall, for what this is, without an eGPU connected, it's a decent performer when you're talking about everyday desktop usage. Going into gaming with this Arcai GPU really isn't something you want to do, so the fact that they do have USB 4 and Oculink so we can really up that GPU performance is great here. For me personally, I could do without having a co-pilot button on a keyboard or in this case on the mini PC itself. I only use it for creating images of hamsters in armor with magical swords. That's something I could live without, but if you're using co-pilot quite a bit on your Windows PC, then having this button here may come in handy for you. But either way, this mini PC is up for sale over on Menace Forum's website. I'll leave some links in the description. And again, as soon as I can make a full video on that eGPU, I'll be doing it. So keep an eye on the channel. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.